I, I reached a point last year of critical mass where somewhere around July I realized I have more costume things than regular clothes. So I organized the closet, but of course it's impossible to keep it organized because of all the various things that go into and out of this closet on a regular basis while well, Celia could do that next week. We have Hawaiian shirt day at work. Early in life, there was um, a costume trunk with a lot of interesting old clothes in it. And we, we got into that and it kind of set, set a trend for uh, other things. And then later in life, I, I often like to say, I want to spend as little time as myself as possible. So putting on costumes and disguises and alternate personalities kind of became a way of stepping out of my own problems and my, you know, my own issues and my own daily existence. Some people would say, oh, you're just escaping from reality. It's all reality. It's, it's continuous. It's all one reality. It's just how you shape it, what you do with it. And cosplay to me, the one thing I, I love about it is that it's a whole bunch of people in agreement to reshape reality and, and reshape what's happening. And in the process, they also reshape their popular shows and their characters and everything is adjustable. Once you, you put on the costume, you go out and start running around as a character. Anime convention is a, a gathering of people who enjoy anime and or manga and video games. Basically people who share like interests. Words alone do not suffice, which is why I take photos. The photos do not suffice to convey to people the amount of fun that we're having. So then I drag them out. I'm like, all right, I'll make you a whole costume. Come on, please, 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 please. You know, I'll pay for your pass for God's sake. It's just one day. Come on. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> eyebrows are gone. No, my eyebrows are still there. Are they? Yeah. You yeah. guys are so dressed up. Anyway, anyway you can mention those stairs. Go down the stairs. What's going on? Anime, anime convention. Anime? Yeah. Like animated? Yeah. How is it possible that no one's ever heard of anime? <laughs> what convention is going on upstairs? Um, the glass convention, be beads, and flowers. Art show, whatever. What's art? I found that a lot of people show the photos I take to their parents and their parents like them. And to me, that's an even higher compliment. <laughs> it's like, yeah, my mom really liked that. I'm like, right on, because that will help their parents accept. It kind of legitimizes that, that someone else liked their costume or their work enough, and they took a picture of it, and they gave it to them. And then it's like, look, mom, you know, this is what we did. And, and my mom, the pictures that people have taken of me, she's got framed on the mantle at home so that when people come over, they're like, who's that? Well, that's my daughter. <laughs> Isn't she in her 30s and working in an office? Yep. <laughs> and that's the logical response to a boring life, isn't it? So. Me and my best friend Sue, we ask each other, what is our real life? Is our life when we're working and doing our regular stuff, is that really what we are? Or is cosplaying what we really want to do? The term cosplay itself. It's a typical Japanese portmanteau of costume and play, kojupureyu, and it's, um, it talks about, I, f I feel it's very important that it's called cosplay. It's not just about costuming, it's also about being this person, playing dress up, playing make-believe, playing out in public as these people, the release from rules and laws, it's game, it's, it's fun. I grew up in the Philippines and I lived there until I was 15. Our childhood was very, I would say, unadventurous. Everything was very strict and rigid. My parents, my mom, she used to buy me and my sister similar outfits. <laughs> it was very odd. I actually really hated it. 
So there's my belt. There's a side of you that wants to be responsible and take care of the things that you need to do. But there's a side of you that needs to take life, you know, in full. Enjoy it in every aspect that you can because I really believe that you never know whether you're gonna wake up tomorrow. So live each day as if it was your last. Anime North is coming up. Anime North is the big one. It is the biggest anime convention in Canada. It's a really amazing place. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's my happy place. I know for a lot of people it's their happy place. The numbers of people that, that attend, to, to give you some idea, uh, two years ago was approximately 12,500. Last year, they said it was about the same, but honestly there, there seemed to be more people. I, I would have said at least 15,000. Crowds, but crowds of cosplayers. The best cosplays in Canada. Like the hands down the best stuff that you're gonna see. Well we can make the transfer today. I mean you have the iron on the The helmet makes his head look really big, so the thing is it's comfortable, I could do it. See that's me. <laughs> I feel like we are really pushing things to the limit all the time. We put like our crazy imagination together and think like, oh, this is gonna be fun if we do this, or we could do something odd like this. Let's try it. It's uh, kind of making the unreal real. Sue attracts people that are definitely characters, and I'd say myself included. Uh, if we go through her, her list of friends over the years, I'd be like the medic skater, she's got the DJ friend, she's got the flaming gay friend, she's got the gay but somewhat more reliable friend, uh, and just everyone that I've met of her friends ends up being a character in some way, and most of them love doing some form of the dress up. Anyone that only likes to sit at home on weekends and do nothing isn't Sue's friend. Lately, Sue has been so in love with the anime, I phone her up and she's like, oh, I can't come out tonight. I, I've just really got to finish this stuff for the weekend. I'm like, that's cool. Like, she's doing something, her hobby is fun, and she enjoys it. So for her to take so much time and put so much effort into it, uh, and I see the results of those efforts, it's cool. If someone said she's, uh, you know, you're a computer geek, She'd probably do this and show off her teardrop tattoos. If someone said she was an anime geek, she'd probably pull out the pictures of all the anime conventions just to prove how much of an anime geek she is. As humans, we're, we're kind of wired to make snap decisions about how people look and everything, the whole package. And that is human nature. There's really nothing you can do about it, but I tend to elicit certain types of responses from people. And most of the time, I don't care, and I just ignore it, and you know, it isn't really a factor because I've, I've had that my whole life. I do so many different things. I, I probably fall into many different categories. There's really no one blanket term or, or wording. You know, if you call me artist, that's nice, but that's very general. There's many different kinds of artists, and there's associations with the word artist, like, like with any single term. So I, I just don't like to be pigeonholed or, or labeled. Um, if you're gonna call me anything, call me genius or call me Sue. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Evil genius is good too. <laughs> it's people who don't go to conventions. It's the people who come up to us and say, "Excuse me, what's going on here?" Uh, which or uh, what's anime? anime you know. Um, a pretty common term is norms or normals or mundanes and there's reference to something called freaking the mundanes, which is, you know, in, in public and cosplay kind of doing things to, to freak normal people out. And it's one of those things that it's not like you have to do very much, so you could just be there in costume and people will react to you anyways. Think of it like a really, really great party like a house party. Everybody's in there having a great time, like, yeah, dancing, social, mixing it up. 
And the mundane is the person who's just on the outside, just like having a good time or just walking across the street. And he's like, what's, what, what's going on in there? It's a language in and of itself. It's, it's a Barthian myth. It's semiology. You are wearing these signs. You are a walking sign. And there are only certain people who are privileged to the language. There are only certain people who can interpret what you are. In that way, it's very, very private. Sue is looking for a subject to do an anime-related tattoo. And I started jumping up and down in my living room going, <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, that's awesome. I wanted I know exactly what I want to do. Pointing at and, the painting. And I was pointing at this this I have a silk screen. Cause so this is actually a scan of of uh, the drawing that I did for my template for the silk screen that's on my wall. And why well, actually it's also on a bunch of t shirts and I did a bag for somebody with it and um yeah. I love it. Like it's a very strong visual image it's got nice lines and the thing is is that unless you like really watch bleach you're not necessarily going to pick up that that is a bleach symbol the only place you see the symbol is in season one in the opening sequence he's got it silk screened on a t-shirt i like stuff where like the person has to be a real fan to figure out like you know hey i know what that is i had seen pictures of cosplayers on the internet I'd heard about it, but I'd never actually experienced it firsthand. And everybody's walking around in such awesome clothes. And I was like, Can, is, am I allowed to get pictures with these guys? Because that'd be totally cool. And one of my friends said, yeah, you can do that. So I was like, okay. And I put my camera to use and I walked around the entire convention taking pictures of people I thought were cool. And I didn't know any anime at the time. I was asking them, you know, what series are you from? What is this? What is it like? And they just, piqued my interest even more, and then I'd get into it and it piqued my interest even more. And I met so many great people. I mean, at the end of the weekend, I was flipping through my camera of all these pictures I'd taken with great, awesome new people and my friends, and I was like, this is totally awesome. I want to do this again. And I did. You meet so many people, you know? And it's, what I like the best is actually when, when people who aren't in fandom, they aren't costumers and stuff like that. They come up and they recognize what your costume is. Like, oh my gosh, is that like, are you Marion Ravenwood from Indiana Jones? You know, and you're like, yes, I am. And they're like, you did a wonderful job on that and stuff like that. Oh, I love that movie. And maybe they haven't watched it for a while. Or sometimes people will see something that you're wearing and they'll be interested and they'll ask you what it is about. And then they'll actually become interested and maybe go look into that comic or maybe go look into that into that anime or whatever. I do that a because lot. because they are so in, fascinated by by your description of, of what you've got going on. So that's yeah, that I think that's so you actually you're impacting other people that way. Oh sorry. That's just water. That was just water. I know, but oh it just started really burning. <coughs> okay. It's gonna be a little red. I'm gonna grab a photo. Okay, are we gonna put something over yes, it? Yes, we're okay, gonna good. put on uh, A&D lotion, vitamin lotion. Can't believe it, cause oh my god, I have a bleach tattoo. I have a bleach tattoo. I don't think I've ever seen anyone with bleach. I don't. I've never seen anyone. I cannot wait to go to Dragon Con. I can't wait. I'm gonna be the only person with a bleach tattoo. It's the anime switch off. It took me actually took me a really long time to talk Vlad into letting me make his Anbu vest. It's just kind of one of those things where if people look at it and they don't recognize it and they've never seen it anywhere before and they can tell that it's made by hand and it has an authentic look to it, you're gonna get some good comments. We met Vlad at DotCon. I think it was around November or even October. And it was a smaller convention that they didn't expect a lot of people to be there. And when he came down the stairs, he was dressed up as Kakashi. Sue was dressed up as Choji, and I was dressed up as Sakura. And when we saw him, we were like, wow, you look awesome. He was dressed up in a yukata. He had the ripe hair, and he had the red sharingan. And we were, we were impressed because a lot of people would dress up as Kakashi, but they wouldn't have the red contact lenses. 
and we're like, we want to take a picture of you. And then the next thing we know, he was basically following Sue around, asking her a bunch of questions about anime, and that's how they became friends and how we became friends. This is my bedroom. I did not do any of this. It was by my aunt, my cousin, my mom. I was working one day and they thought it would be probably a pretty good present for my birthday to uh, make it all like a Japanese theme because I'm interested in Japanese culture. So basically all this was mostly done by my aunt when it comes to all the sewing, like the tapestries and you know, the bed clock. It was all sewn by my aunt. On the wall, as you can see, we have my name and translated on the right is the main name in Japanese. It was a great birthday present and awesome. Yeah. In Belarus and Russia, there's not much for people to live by. It's difficult, you have to really work hard. But here, you know, you can live for yourself, you know, provide for yourself. While there, you have to like, work like three to four jobs just to pay for your apartment. My mom basically thinks that cosplay is a bit expensive, you know, being like a single parent. Well, of course, I got my own job, so it kind of takes a burden off her shoulders and what she has to pay. But since it's like a personal hobby, that like the very few hobbies I have, you know, it's something I can spend my money on freely, something I enjoy. He's a Hatake Kakashi from Naruto, and he seems to be more of a character that doesn't talk that much personally. So it kind of like represents me and who I am. I just try to keep it low and just hang out with my friends and talk to them. If someone approaches me, sure, I'll talk to them, you know. I'm pretty open when it comes to a person, but he's just not that social. These are people who are still inhabiting their own bodies and aware of who they are and where they are in society. But giving part of that up and accepting the flaws and the positive traits of another identity and play at being themselves through this filter. This is identity play. This is the ability to become someone else, but also learn from being that someone else, to take a piece of that, the parts that you like, and graft that onto your everyday personality, and then change yourself. The first cosplay that I, that I did, anime cosplay, was Choji Akamichi from Naruto, the, the chubby kid. I had no idea what to expect. A, it was my first cosplay. B, it was my first anime North. And the reaction just blew me away. Um, right away, I had two girls run up to me screaming, Joji, Joji, to hug me. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, cool, hi, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I, I didn't know, you know, because um, the conventions I'd been at before, no, nobody was running up to me to hug me. I'm a little concerned I may become known as Choji, but you know, character-wise, I like the character for his his qualities of um, friendship and loyalty. Those those are two things that, that have always been very important to me, and that's what people tend to associate with the character. So, good, do it. <laughs> you know, um, he, he's one of those characters that is misjudged, and he's the underdog, but he he comes back from a lot of the punishment that he takes. <laughs> There's great historical precedence for costume playing, for the convention scene. Um, it's not an isolated incident. It's not a subculture that suddenly spontaneously developed. This has always been going on in society. There's always been carnivals and masquerade balls. And the chance to give people to, if not be someone else like cosplay, then to at least not be themselves. The reason why we have so many conventions around Toronto is because we've had a long tradition of running conventions. I guess we've had uh, science fictions further back than 25 years and it's progressed from science fiction literary conventions to science fiction media conventions and now we've gone into anime conventions. So it's just sort of a natural progression. So we've always had that similar media fandom theme and scene for conventions, and it's just sort of developed as, as the trends develop and what's become popular in fandom and media. The Masquerade itself is, best way to describe it is, it's a costume presentation contest. So it's a stage show for the audience so that they can see, you know, hopefully what are the best of the best costumes at the convention, displayed in an entertaining and hopefully appropriate way. 
you know, appropriate to the character, and that is. And it's also, at the same point in time, a contest which is being judged so people compete to show off their costumes and just to get general recognition from their peers. In the local cosplaying scene, there are, of course, people that you see every year and anticipate seeing their costumes every year. There's uh, Sarcasm Hime, whom I don't know personally, who, but who's brilliant. And there's also Featherweight, who is um, less of a costume maker and more of a costume constructor. He does all these really brilliant, very large, bulky, full body covering, latex suit kind of work. He looks like big Hollywood monster movie kind of work. Um, he's done the entire reboot group. He did, he built a, a crimson binome and a fong that were to scale, so people actually had to wear them as backpacks. He did this really famous squirtle. His whole head, I assume it was paper mache. His whole head was just covered. People don't know what Featherweight looks like. He's, he's sort of like the Pokeroo. Maybe he's like Zorro. So you see him on Saturday, and he's completely covered head to toe in his costume. You never see any of his skin. And then you could be having coffee next to him on Sunday morning after the masquerade and have no idea. He's mysterious. Ow, 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 ow. Ugh. Ah, I think my head's gotten bigger. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this was one of my uh, first uh, really curvy helmet attempts of like a really curved surface with cardboard. I still remember his thin costume from many years ago, if only because I was working backstage and every time he took a step, the ground shook. There was little bits of orange rock falling off the guy. It was a pretty impressive costume. I don't think I can, I can use the word on camera to describe exactly how crazy he was for doing that as a costume. And I told it to his face, I said, man, you are one crazy, insert terms here. The batshit crazy motherfucker award. <laughs> so, <laughs> those are the exact words. <laughs> So uh, that's the most creative use of material award for my 110 pound rock costume. Professionally, I make most of my money from uh, commissioning props and other small, smaller-ish pieces for uh, other costumers. Because a lot of people will have a generalized skill set. Someone can be really, really good at sewing, but have no idea how to make a sword. So instead of having like their crappy sword that they could make over a weekend for like their costume that they work months on to make perfect and they'll like create the costume. They hire me for a commission and I make them a nice shiny sword to go with their costume. I'm perfectly happy doing this stuff because I get to meet really cool people working on stuff who are really creative. Uh, I pretty much get to pick what I want to do because you know I don't have to take a commission from someone. If I'm working for a special effects studio I get to do what I'm told to work on you know. Those poor guys in the Lord of the Rings making up who had to make chain mail. That's all they did for like four years was make chain mail suits. They had like no fingerprints left. You know, the, I'd probably end up doing that if I was stuck in a prop company. For Anime North, I'm personally actually really comfortable this year because uh, my costume is Henchman 21 from the Venture Brothers, one of my favorite cartoons. Um, and I got it done like months ago because this year I was determined not to have to rush at the end and have a nice, comfortable, relaxing build up. Uh, of course, that's before we put together a Venture Brothers group and I ended up uh, committing myself to building a giant robot prop of a giant character that's standing alone. So I, I'm really working on that now, which is Helper from Venture Brothers. So uh, yeah, I've got four days to build that. And then I have to do at least two commissions to be able to pay for my hotel room and food for Anime North. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, it's going to be a hectic suicide run as usual. <laughs> Today we're going to uh, finish up as much as we can from Vlad's Anbu costume because we all want to just get it done at this point and get it out of the way. So there's a few things left to do. I don't know if we're going to get it all done today, but um, we need to fix the vest, which the first time it was made it was too small. Made it again, added two extra inches and he decided it's too big. So instead of taking it apart and re-sewing it, we're just going to take it in a little bit. 
We're gonna make a new ninja mask because his first one's getting kind of worn out. Uh, we need to finish the gag stuff that we're putting under the mask, which is a great big um, kissy lips and some buck teeth. And uh, he can wear them under the mask, and then when people bug him to say, like, show me your face, show me your face, and he can just scare the crap out of them with his giant lips. And they're gonna make new arm guards because the first arm guards that I made, I, I wasn't happy with them. And it, now that it's the last minute, he's, he's getting a little picky. He wants everything to be perfect. So um, half the stuff that we're doing today is a redo. I want this to be long here and here. So move it over this and <laughs> pull this to Too peaky. Well, I have hair now, so it's kind of hard to do it. No, it's okay, just sit on the side. Yeah. <laughs> now we have to take care of your majesty. We have to move everything, put on the plate. You have really good ideas. Have a good night. What night? Come on, it's good to work all day. Get to work. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Alright, welcome to T-minus two days from Anime North. Um, I'm currently sitting in a disaster area, which is my workshop, because there's no time to clean up for a con, so this is going to have to get taken care of after. Uh, I have to do a dark gun for my uh, Henchman 21 costume and finish some commission stuff, or I can't afford my hotel room. You could have a million years and it would still be down to the last second because there's always another thing to do. It's really, you just kind of have to go with what you have finished at the last second because that's cosplay. Utility belt. No, seriously, he's got the utility belt. <laughs> My daughter's gonna be here. She's really, really big into anime. Um, I just mostly came to support her and to support some of my other friends that are coming. Um, I was never huge into the idea of dressing up and stuff, but then I found out that there was a Clerks cartoon. Everybody tells me I look like Silent Bob, so what the hell? Thought I'd thought I'd do that just to spice things up a little bit. Yeah, well I work with Sue, so every once in a while we, we talk a lot at work and, and describe, she describes a lot of the situations, a lot of the events. Um, yeah, we don't really have any expectations, don't know what to look forward to, but we'll see how the day unfolds.
interesting, that's for sure. I get attention when I'm not actually dressed like him. Telling people telling me that I look like him, so it's ought to be interesting. I can't hear you. Look awesome. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Freaking awesome. Wait, are you the real one? Yeah. 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 Print the speech picture. Oh, Our website. seems to be the loudest and the most frantic. Uh, Fan Expo is very, very large and filled with a lot of people, but not, not near as high a ratio of cosplayers. And the general age of people at Anime North tends to be, I would guess, at about 25 and below. It seems to be the convention that you go to when you're very young, your very first convention, your very first cosplay experience. And anime seems to be sort of the very first fandom that people really connect with. I know personally I wasn't really into fandom until Sailor Moon, which was my grade 7, 8 year. And that seems to be about the age when, when people get into anime, and thus when they first start attending conventions. I just He's got so here. popular. <laughs> you love it's your crazy. new life, don't you? <laughs> Another cosplayer for life. For life. <laughs> this is the uh, weapons check in large prop area. So when you're attending the convention, if you have a weapon or a large prop, you have to register it with us just so that we know you're out there and that you've read the rules and regulations surrounding props, what you can do, what you can't do, what you can bring in. It's just all around safety. The one benefit of doing this is that you get to see every costume that comes into the convention and they have to like parade it in front of you and show you and you, you can sit there and grill them on how they made it, what materials and what the process was. This convention is one of the best that I've been to. So many costumes, so many people from every walk of life. It's amazing. It's just a lot of fun. He, he looks pretty good for him. Being Kevin Smith has its advantages with the older crowd, especially when you're single. Hi, how are you? You want to see the tattoo? <laughs> Isn't it awesome? I'm like so happy. I was like trying to find a costume that would show it, but I didn't have one, so. This is my daughter Alyssa. Um, I'm mostly here to support her and uh, her obsession, I guess, with, with Japanese anime. Um, yeah, coming here and seeing what it's all about and being part of it and being harassed for pictures and all that stuff, you definitely get a, a feel that there's a, like a com camaraderie and there's a, like this feeling when you're here that, that you're a part of something. It's pretty cool. Saying that when you're driving here, you look out the window and see crazy people, and you think the fact that you're home, okay? Yeah. I'm like, I'm back in civilization. <laughs> My civilization. <laughs> There's crazy people here. Yeah, yeah. I actually think it's really fun. I can see why people spend months and months and months preparing elaborate costumes. To put it bluntly, ever since people started referencing me, saying that I looked like Kevin Smith, and I started going out in public even just to like to the pub with the coat on and everything and getting all the attention I've been getting you really become an attention whore <laughs> it just kind of turns you into one automatically and you'll love it it's awesome and also have you ever tried explaining to your dad what cosplaying is before he came in? yeah <laughs> <laughs> about that because I would watch little like cosplay skits on the internet and he's just sitting here watching over my shoulder going what do these guys think they're doing? What's the point of all this? I'm like, come on, it's fun. So I have, and he never really got it. And now that he's doing it, he gets it and it's more fun. Awesome costume. There you go. Have a good day. See you tomorrow. Yeah, yes. 
How many costumes are you bringing for the fashion show? Uh, two. I only have the one. But it's changed a little. It's hard because like, I have something different in the morning. All right. But Take care. Oh, that is awesome. Great costume. Just got out of registration. It's been an exhausting, exhausting car ride over here. Traffic was hectic, but we're here now. It is gonna time to have fun. Oh yeah! I only got about 30 minutes to get myself over to the hotel, get dressed, and get to fly all the way back down here for the skits. So I'll talk to you later when I get back. See ya. It's been a really nice masquerade so far. There's a lot of really cool costumes around and like some rare stuff and it's just not a whole bunch of Nataros doing walk-ons. Like, like every third skit has been really entertaining and that is a good con. So, you know, a good laugh every three minutes is great. So yeah, there's, there's been some really clever ideas. Uh, probably not going to be taking home anything major this year just because there's a lot of good competition. Go Team Venture! <laughs> That's it. Entry number 20A, for real, I'm not making another Canadian joke, I'm not doing that again, I know you're filming, is in the Master Division, titled Three and a Robot. What exactly am I doing? Your boy can come to your rescue, and I kidnap him. Then his dad comes to his rescue, and I capture his dad. And I totally scored huge points with the monarch for handing him Dr. Venture. Totally hates that guy. Anyways, I left a voicemail. They should be here any minute now. Hey, wait, what do you mean, my boyfriend? You know, Dean Venture. You two are totally dating, right? Dean? No. He's kind of nice, but he's a total dork. <laughs> what? This isn't the robot? What the heck is he even saying? He said the Ventures are in Venezuela, fighting radioactive manacondas or something. Oh, dude, no way! <laughs> he said Mr. Venture passed along the message to my father. What, wait? Who's your father? You know, Dr. Orpheus? No way! Isn't he that dragon-looking guy? He's like magic or something, right? I'm not fighting magic! I can turn into a smurf! I just know it! Dude, no way! So, what? Can I go home now? As long as you promise not to tell your dad about this. I don't want to be a smurf! That was entry number 28, three and a robot. Ah, uh, they didn't cut us off at the 60 second mark, so that was good. Uh, I flailed around a lot. Yep. That was fun. <laughs> he made funny faces. That was good. I writhed my hands in like agony. You. <laughs> you just bring you guys here.
first bell. So yeah, well, well. <laughs> go team helper. Yeah. Go team. Oh yeah, go team, go team helper. Yeah. <laughs> got some ribbons on you. Yeah, I, uh, our group picked up uh, best props and uh, armor for the Masters Division. So uh, pretty happy about that. Got the, uh, you know, nice award. Uh, apparently we would have got a presentation ribbon too, but uh, one of our characters kind of did nothing during the skit because we didn't know if he was going to get finished, so he wasn't actually written to our primary skit. In our backup skit, we had no time to edit together because we were spending all the time finishing the costume. So, you know, yeah. But it works out in the end, you know. Got a nice ribbon. Helper got a ribbon, you know. It was, you're going to hear this word a lot, uh, epic. The photos I can't wait to go through. I have about 1,300 photos from two and a half days. So I'm going to go home and um, laugh randomly for hours well into the night um, and uh, relive all the memories and then get them, get them out to everyone as quickly as possible. Oh my God, <laughs> they can do that here? Well, I have to say, they told me 15,000 people here. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's easy. That's phenomenal. Yeah. I Everything just want to know when it happened. Like, I don't think how did you get into this? Slowly started growing. Okay. My background is anthropology, so I'm, I have a very similar approach to what you do. I want to understand why people do it. And, you know, when I started doing this, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll dress up, I'll go undercover. No, I was converted like that. <laughs> so. I enjoyed this conversation so much. Thank you very much. And I hope it wasn't rude. Thank you. No, not at all. Oh, it's always interesting. We were going to leave, but, you know, we got caught up. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to go up to my hotel room and Because I want to understand it. And you know what? I think I'm 56. I think back in the day, I was probably with you. I would prefer if society at large didn't even know we existed. And cosplayers already take our art seriously. We believe in it. Why else would we spend months and months and months losing weight, putting on weight, growing our hair, cutting it off, putting in contact lenses for the first time, making molds of fangs, covering boots, sewing? If we didn't take it seriously, we wouldn't do it. That's not to say that not taking it seriously doesn't mean we're not having fun. As much as I bitch and stitch, I'm still enjoying all of it, the whole process, and it's gratifying to be able to present a piece of art to a community of people who can appreciate it for its artistic value, who understand and still have fun and, and love it because it's kitschy and it's chintzy and it's made from liquid metal gold sequined fabric that nobody except figure skaters wear. There we go, there we go, okay. <laughs> My parents think that a lot of this, this activity around anime conventions and cosplay, I think that they kind of assume that it's related to either an escape from reality or uh, a second childhood. And an interesting idea, I repeated it to one of the older gentlemen I know who's in his 40s and he has a grown son and he still cosplays and comes out to conventions and helps run them and, and organize things. And he, he said, what second childhood? I'm still in the first one. I would still cosplay even if I had kids and got married. I probably would bring my kids there and also put them in costume. <laughs> There's not very many things where you can leave your reality for three days and <laughs> go have fun and then come home and go into withdrawal. Well, there's drugs, but anime conventions are cheaper. That's Just enough.
another day Waking up, brush my teeth and wash my brain Drink some coffee, the news driving me insane The word is bad, I stay at home, yeah This is just another day Waking up, brush my teeth and wash my brain Drink some coffee, the news driving me insane The word is bad, I stay at home Welcome back to the real world Your dreams are over, say good morning to TV We left with China Chain War is in the east, they say it's for our best But you get an energy, why they want it from the west A thousand people dead, riots on the streets You said bombers in Baghdad, bloods in Asia, it's enough I switch off my TV, close my eyes and fall asleep In my dreams, humanity, there's a peace and unity This is just Another day waking up, brush my teeth and wash my brain Drink some coffee, the news driving me insane The world is bad, I stay at home, yeah This is just another day waking up, brush my teeth and wash my brain Drink some coffee, the news driving me insane The world is bad, I stay at home No more hate, no more racism And no one is judged by the color of his skin No gods and no religion, no corruption And no politician How nice this world could be What people would all get tired and sleep I'm trying my best, I'm going to bed And I keep on dreaming of a better world